hit the side of that with a chisel. Try to or a slide hammer. I'm working on putting the handles back in with the headliner now in its place. There's one handle attached there and it does really help take up a lot of the extra slop and wrinklage. Uh, the vinyl, the plastic here is great. The plastic here is awful. Look at that, it's, it's crumbled to the point that it is no good to touch as soon as I start getting on it. It just disintegrates completely. I think this is the worst one of it, but the worst, worst ones came out of Ivy. They were all just dust. <laughs> and if there was anything left, as soon as you touch it, it became dust. So I'm just being very, very careful, hoping to gently pop these on and never have to touch them again. As soon as somebody sits in the back seat and grabs this handle, if they brush up against the plastic and it crumbles, oh well, you gotta just get used to the idea that it's not gonna last on this one. You can buy these handles in black right now from VP, but not in white. Uh, at least there's an option for something. clean surface for the new windshield gasket to adhere all around and the spots that had rust were painted Dana Lim is the company that makes this auto mastic and it could not sound more generic but okay they've got instructions in the rear starts in Danish and Swedish so it's probably a Scandinavian company cures to a rubber like skin within 24 hours remain soft and plastic underneath the skin. That's the important thing, is we want it to basically remain flexible. Temperature between five and 40 centigrade. I think we're just fine today. Let's clean the windshield. I'll remove the trim from the rubber, and then I'll put the new rubber in after the windshield is very cleaned and start lubricating things using the nylon rope with silicone spray and rope it into the car. Knockoff store brand paracord, and it's just nylon braided. It's gonna be easier than the fabric. The inside seal, this is the bottom, this will be the part that covers the dashboard. It doesn't look like it's gonna to be too difficult to lift up the flap, so I'm actually gonna to wait to do the dash, because it'll be much easier to rope in the glass now. But there's two slots, and I don't really know why. We'll see when we get it on exactly which one of these wants to be roped in. Because the other side has two as well, and them's for the outermost is the trim, and then the inside one that has the real deep cut. Oof, that cuts deeper than an emo song. That is right where the glass will go. It's got these nice ribs on it too. I do want to put some seal on the glass. I'm awfully tempted, because I don't know how much I trust just the rubber. Hmm. But it might make a real mess getting this thing on the glass with, the, with some sealant on it already. Or maybe I could try to funnel the sealant here and then stick this on the glass. And then it'll squeeze out of the corners, and then when I rope it in, I can go in and do the second portion of sealing. Typically, it's not the glass to rubber that fails, not really fails, but leaks, but it's the rubber to body. So that's been my experience with the 122s. This is a different territory, and as we have noticed, there are some improvements, but overall, it's still a pretty basic style metal frame, so you can't have too much sealant How about that. Okay, concerning the second cutout, it's actually, this is the first one here, the deeper one is the one that you put into the rope and then the rope to the frame. The second one is just a sort of a layer that sits here on this groove because it is kind of a, a deep channel. So that goes there and then essentially there's a flap underneath it that is free until I guess the trim is installed or something, or maybe when you stick the glue gun in there, it will fill in this channel, unless you flip up the other one to get that channel, which I don't think you'd will or do or can 
once it's in place. So I will rope in this one and then I'll glue in this one after the fact. not good for my carpal tunnel. The darn thing's gotta just sit in the sun and warm up because it flows so slowly. Be careful getting it on your skin though. Not that it won't burn, it's just, it's tough to clean off. It's basically liquid tar and it's on. So I'm gonna attach this windshield gasket to the windshield and some of the goop will settle and then I will uh, call a helper and we will set it down here where it will be roped in. You saw I was spraying the paracord with a silicone spray that'll help it slide out of the rubber. May or may not get in the way of sealing the thing later with the actual sealer, sealant, but I, I don't know. <laughs> Getting the gasket on is kind of nerve wracking because it really fights you a lot of the time. It's tight, it's real tight on there and you use silicone like I was tempted to do here just for a little bit. It makes the whole thing easier to get on, but also much easier to slip off and then it gets pretty messy. My biggest concern was the sides pinching together so much that it creates a crack right down the center or on one of the corners of the glass because this glass is 50 years old after all. But it worked, finally, whew. With a patina paint job that's really low consequence, one can find a great deal of satisfaction and fun in some of these little projects. I've sealed all the rust on the bottom and around the frame, making this a much nicer trunk than it was just a few minutes ago. I have an idea for what kind of gasket to use. I did keep this one here because it's important to me that it still latches nicely and the idea I have is to get a sort of universal strip that will apply down the sides because that one has an intact channel, but this one is lacking. But I am pleased that it's sealed up nicely now. Okay, all of that was just to let the paint dry because it didn't go so well on the dashboard so that I could get back to the windshield. It's a bit of a train and I started the trunk because I wanted to get things into it uh, that were in my way. For example, this rubber mat, not this one, but then I was like, okay, if I'm putting the mat away, I may as well put in the one from Amy. And that one's in there with some seats. So I took the seats out and now they're chilling here, but I needed some trunk in here and I wanted to vacuum it. And I was like, but I got to take all this stuff out and then it's going to make crumbly, messy, mess, mess. And then I started in there. Next thing you know, she's pretty. Move it on. Hey, remember what I said about Amy's gas tank? How the inside is like really nice shape and the fuel came out clear? Ooh, the only thing this thing is fueling is nightmares. We'll just pretend we didn't see that. Time for an update. I'm back here working on the inside. I've started connecting things. The heater core 
the heater box is in place, and I've reached the wiring. That is, oh, the firewall, I actually had to do the blanket, and then I took it off, because the glue I put on the backside didn't hold. That blanket is heavy, it's dense material, and while it's fine on the floor, when it comes to these vertical surfaces, it's no wonder both cars had the blanket falling. Even with the plugs that were gonna go in place, it just seemed to be too much. So I like the sound editing that I got, and I am, you know, I've applied it all around these places. Some of these cuts ain't very pretty, but they're there. And this is all behind the dashboard stuff, so it doesn't really bother that much. The heater valve is installed. The heater box took a little finagling. There's the uh, water drain. It does make a couple of bends, but it's not kinked. That's the important thing. And the blower is in place. The uh, wiper motor is already there. And that wiper motor should be working quite nicely. I hope so. We'll find out when I get some power to it. I think I can power everything up without having the physical dashboard in place once all the uh, hard wiring is connected. And that way I can test all of my switches and adjust any wiring that needs to be adjusted before moving on. I have swapped over all the switches from Amy, except for the turn signal, and the hazard switch. I worked so hard on that that it's, it's mine now, you know? As far as the fuses go, there's uh, the big harness coming out of the firewall. Over yonder, that's the relocation fuses. Right now I haven't done much in terms of disconnecting this, but I have Amy's here with the exact same part number, 681502, Volvo Imperial. And there's the back side of them, which show you the different routings of the input side, which is the bottom, as we stare at it here. So now it's the opportunity for me to go through all my old photos, which is why I'm not using time-lapse, because I gotta really reference all these photos I've taken, and connect all of this to here the way it's supposed to be, and then splice it into that. Essentially what it does is it takes the input and it sends it out to the fuse box and then brings it back to the top here. So the fusing is all done on that side. I think I explained that well. I sure hope so. It's hot today. It's only 90 degrees, but that's still pretty hot to be in direct sunlight at a mile elevation where it burns your skin. So this is Amy's stuff. This is where the fuse panel would be. I've got enough photos that I'm not scared of mixing up much, but it's all very straightforward stuff. That's what I like about Volvo. I didn't take enough photos, but it's hard to mess it up because how many times I gotta tell you these cars are simple? Maybe I should stop in case there's a problem. You know, I've still got a rope in the glass and let's hope it is simple, but it seems to be. know if you could tell but there's a big smile on my face that endorphin rush when a glass goes in whoo i it's not just any glass this is a 50 year old windshield it's crank free but i was like oh here's what happened i didn't ask for help and that created a lot more work for me you see my tool sticking out of the top there because what happened was roping it in well that seemed pretty straightforward no you're supposed to have two people one person palms pushes down on the glass as the rope pulls the seal around. Without that, what happens is the seal either won't flip over the edge or it only flips over the edge barely. And the result of that is the windshield sticks up here. And this part of the gasket, instead of laying flat like that, was laying like this. Uh-oh, lots of force. Pushing down, pushing down, pushing down. I don't know how to quantify how many pounds of force, but it's really just gentle, 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 because I didn't want it to break. Nobody wants their windshield to break. I'm over here thinking, all right, am I prepared to spend a month's wages on getting a replacement or not? So the seal has worked its way around with a little bit of silicone spray, some patience, a lot of patience, a little ingenuity. And so the way I did that is actually this part of the tool, as you lift it up, you see there's a gap in there. I use that to put the straw 
from the silicone spray and then just work them both around like that. I didn't film because I was in the heat of the moment, but eventually that helped kind of get the inside to slide a little bit better. And then I had to go inside, make sure the edges all flipped out. And then I would run this. Thankfully it's a fresh gasket. I would just tuck underneath and I would run it all the way around several times and I would make sure that the gasket is seated all the way up against the windshield because that'll give us the clearance to pop it all down. The next task, the next challenge, and for my next trick is inside of this channel, I'm going to stuff the rope and then we're going to apply the trim. Volvo is specific that they want you to have a four millimeter rope. For me, I got, what is it, one eighth inch, which is like 3.17 millimeters or something. And then the next size up is three sixteenths. And I think three sixteenths is just over four millimeters. So I got the size down. The trim is still in the old rubber and the way it mounts, this larger lip will go into it. We're looking at the top of the windscreen here. That's the bottom, the wider end. So the trim will sit in there and you'll put the rope in and pull the rope and that will work its way around and around and around. I don't remember where to start on these. I'm gonna read the green book instructions. And that one, I think I'll do a, a longer video so we can actually help some other folks out there who wanna change their trim. You should be able to do the trim at any time. Um, if you remove it with the windshield in place, it will probably bend it too much and it will break. Moving on. This thing hasn't been in the sun in a while, but I needed that warmth to help this gasket make its final descent. Oh yeah. Let's appreciate the dashboard. Once I figured out that the steering shaft does not go through the gauge cluster hole, it wasn't that bad to put it in. My biggest concern, of course, was cracking the old vinyl. It has a little bit of bend to it, but I do want to lubricate it nicely so that it has hopefully some moisture that it can soak up. I don't know. It doesn't, think, it doesn't seem like much moisture can be added to old dried plastic, but at least we can hope to prevent more cracks in the future by keeping it all lubricated using like the Meguiar's uh, UV protectant or the aerospace, 303 aerospace protectant. She's becoming a car, slowly but surely. I also had to magnetize the screwdriver with one of these because the screws, well, it's just harder with the rubber edge inside. I just made a lot more work for me. I should have put the dashboard in completely and then done the windshield. But it's all good, we got there, and wow, we over spray. Can we talk about this? Probably shouldn't. Let's just pretend yeah, we didn't see that, and I'll just move right on. And I get to cross off a few things here. Oh, this feels good. And then David said, let there be AM radio. Or lightning. Pick your poison. <laughs>